I just have one thing to say about Conjuration Sork, and that is damn. So I slapped together just a makeshift, like a, an improvised version of what I think would be the best version of Conjuration Sork today, and it blew my expectations out of the water, and I'm not even exaggerating. So I was missing three or four of the integral major aspects of the build, and it was still clearing high tier nightmare dungeons, like without a hitch and it kind of freaked me out because the biggest problem with this build is you need a lot of attack speed you need a lot of attack speed because you're using chain lightning to spoof out an unlimited amount of hydras because you're using the hydra enchant and we lost the ravenous vampiric power so we lost like free double attack speed right i didn't have the accelerating aspect on i didn't have the new ice blades aspect on which i would put on i didn't have a couple other damage aspects like conceited aspect and it was still just uh, demolishing just like a condemned building set to be blown up and demolished that's what was happening to all these monsters what are we talking about so they adjusted just a couple instances of scaling for the build in the season 3 patch notes and then they also gave ice blades its first aspect and that aspect is really good it's like an S tier aspect because it does utility and it also gives a top tier damage multiplier. Like you gotta use it, right? And you're probably gonna put it on your necklace too because it's just that good. So to go over a couple parts of the build, we're using Ice Blades Enchant and Hydra Enchant because we want a proactive approach and a passive approach to making a lot of conjurations. So you're generally gonna lead off, when you go into a pack, you're gonna summon two Hydras because those two Hydras, when you're using the Hydra aspect, those have a limit to how many you can have, which is two. But the Hydras that are summoned from the Hydra enchantment, uh, those have no limit. So you just wanna use as much mana as possible in order to summon as many as possible, right? So we're using Chain Lightning with the recharging aspect and one point in Invigorating Conduit because it helps out just a little bit to smooth out the amount of uh, mana you're using. You can see at certain points on screen during this gameplay footage, I actually get up to like over 10, over 12 conjurations at the same time. And if I had a perfectly min-max necklace with plus three to conjuration mastery, you know, like 10 or 12 instances of 6% multiplicative damage, that's over 60% multiplicative damage just from one passive. Uh, it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it's it's kind of imbalanced uh, as long as you have really good gear. And now let's talk about the Ice Blades enchantment. So the Ice Blades enchantment, it's really good with unstable currents because that's a lot of cooldown you're using. So you instantly summon almost two Ice Blades just from using unstable currents. And we're using the Crackling Energy key passive so that our lightning skills cooldowns go down. And so that also lowers our lightning spear cooldown, our unstable currents cooldown, and our teleporting cooldown, all of which are cooldown skills which summon more ice blades. So really what you want to be doing is just spamming them, just spamming them. If you're not on hardcore, you don't need to save your teleport for any like safety issues. So you can just go pure, you can just go in, just use everything all the time. And that will help the snowball effect for ice blades, cooldown reduction, applying to other skills. And then everything is just is bonkers. You can see when a big fight happens, you can really tell if you pay attention to the cooldown of all the different cool down skills on the skill bar you can tell during this gameplay footage that they're all going down really fast like it's kind of it's kind of freaky how fast they go down and then with the buff to lightning spear lightning spear makes everything vulnerable which was generally the biggest problem for sorks uh, of any kind not even just conjuration sorks in particular it was pretty rough on conjuration sorks in particular without vampiric powers but now it's that's just soft that's just soft everything's vulnerable all the time and also lightning spear is stunning everything all the time so it's probably the best utility skill that the build gets access to it's just straight amazing it's amazing i love lightning spear now i was even thinking while i was recording this gameplay that i was like oh, i'd like more lightning spears because of how good they are so yeah you're just going to want to spam all your cooldowns as much as possible generally save unstable currents for big fights where there's like six or more elites or if there's a boss that you want to deal with quickly the biggest drawback of the build is its late game scaling is hyper dependent 
on getting an amazing necklace and getting an amazing helmet. That's usually not how it goes. You want levels to conjuration skills, you want conjuration mastery, preferably you want plus three of both of those on your amulet and a percentage intelligence roll and like percent total armor because you need percent total armor on sorks because they don't really have access to a lot of armor so you want as many instances of those as possible and then to min max damage as much as possible you want cooldown reduction and then plus the hydra plus the ice blades and plus the lightning spear on a helmet now if you just get a Shaco, like that's amazing, right? Like you should just use a Shaco. But most people aren't gonna have Shakos. And if you're playing this build, you're probably not gonna have a Shaco. So those levels to the conjuration skills, they're important and they scale the damage up a lot, but they're not as important because the battle casters aspect, which gives you levels to conjuration skills, there are diminishing returns when it comes to scaling base damage. So the more levels, that you add to your base skills, the le the like less that it's actually giving you. So all these different instances of plus levels to your various conjuration skills are going to be diminishing how much um, they're actually worth. So either get a really good helmet or use the battle casters aspect, the offensive aspect. Um, but you should rather use the conceited aspect or the storm soil aspect just because of how like battle casters is only sincerely giving you like maybe. 12% multiplicative damage if you have a good helmet and a good necklace. It's super good for leveling though, and that's what we're going to talk about now is the leveling of the build. The leveling of the build, pretty much you need both enchantment slots, you need the recharging aspect, and for leveling I would recommend getting three levels in the invigorating conduit passive. I wouldn't try to level with this build before level 30, but at level 30 when you have both enchantment slots, you can swap everything. I think you're gonna be good to go. Plus Conjurations is super high in quality of life and like ease of use and convenience, but high in the micro. You're gonna be, it's basically like keyboard sork, right? Yeah, finally we have another build in the S tier alongside Fireball, alongside Blizzard, and now Conjurations. We have three sork builds in the S tier in my opinion. I don't really think uh, any other build is quite up there yet. I hope you guys enjoy it. This build does take a long time to come online, but it kind of makes Diablo 4 feel like it has a good loot system, <laughs> which is funny, right? I, I hope RNG blesses you with, with whatever you're looking for.